Hello again, I'm Ernest Minu. Let's settle for the details now. That's anger among some Nigerians here in Ghana after an extension of the residence of the Nigerian High Commissioner meant to house some staff of the commission was demolished last Friday night. Now, here are some reactions from the demolition scene Saturday morning. Yeah, there was no one police here. I was here one day. Oh, no one police here. I was here when our ambassador was, was, was about to here. There was no one police The police Nigeria life matter. Nigeria life matter. Nigeria life matter. Look at it. If this can be done to our presidency, if this can be done to our presidency, how much are we as another citizens? Let me see what I'm saying. What I'm saying. For more than a minute, I want you to be calling. We've been calling the police. Nobody. Listen, listen, be careful. Nobody should injure themselves. Be careful. Be careful. The thing, the thing falls on them. Be careful. Nigeria life matter in Ghana. Nigeria life matter in of course. Ghana. Of course. We are human beings. That's right. We can't breathe. That's right. We are on our way. We are suffering. If this thing can be done to our high commission resident, if this Nigeria is here, overnight, overnight. the woman life is in danger. That's right. The woman life is in danger all over the world. America, Europe, our high commission life is in danger. On Saturday morning, Johnny's editor, Fred Smith, was at the scene earlier and interacted with some angry Nigerians. Listen. This is not Ghana that I know. We are actually hoping to attack if this continues. Somebody who came with ammunition, gun, precisely what I heard, and he was threatening the security officers, and not anybody that you can say is just a, a, a normal person. He's an intruder. Please, the authorities should not allow this into life. Because we Nigerians we are not going to allow this to go to Scott Free. Sincerely, uh, if this is going to end the relationship between Nigeria and Ghana, I think we are ready for it. Thank you very much. Our government should not go to sleep with this kind of disgrace. This is not just national grade, this is an international disgrace for us. In fact, if Nigeria can be treated like this in Ghana, Ghana that we hold so much in our hearts, Ghana that our government has helped so much with our, 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 our resources and everything, I don't think that we deserve this kind of treatment. And as I'm talking to you now, since I came here more than two hours, I haven't seen any security put here to, to protect the woman who is our, our acting high commissioner. The gate has been pulled down, no security. What would the woman do? I don't know. This, this, this is happening like, it's, it's, it's like a movie. But it is real. And I want our government to do something, to rise up to this occasion. Because we cannot continue to take this insult. If this thing continues like this, we will, we have, we have a country. Ghana High Commission is at a very choice place in Abuja. The worst part of it is that we have police headquarters here who is just five minutes drive to this place. And this community is a community that is so protected. If there is a whistle here, you get the police running down. This mission, this thing was done for in, in one hour. A good one hour, they were destroying this thing and there was nobody that come to protect us. So we Nigerians, we don't feel safe. I have not been to my house. I don't feel safe. I have nowhere to go. If bulldozers can come and pull down our high commission like this, then who am I? They could just take me and kill me on the street or cut my neck. This is how we are feeling right now. And I don't think it's funny. I don't think it's funny because we can't do this to, to Ghana people. God bless you. I don't want to talk more. And now the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the leadership of the Nigerian Union of Traders Association here in Ghana, and the Nigerian government have all issued statements condemning the act. The government of Ghana has uh, begun investigations into the matter to fish out persons behind the demolition exercise. I'm joined in the studio uh, by Johnny editor Fred Smith for more on this. Fred, you were on the grounds. Tell us more about the structure uh, we are seeing in terms of its capacity, how big or small. Well, it's a three-bedroom apartment, uh, one-floor, three-bedroom apartment. Okay. Uh, we have four of them mm -hmm. built together. Okay. So 12 
bedroom apartment but separated into three bedrooms each just that they are joined and so you have that kind of uh, structure built together okay. and it was meant to house the diplomats who come in from Nigeria and other places to do mm -hmm. business or anything mm -hmm. with the Nigerian uh, High Commission in Ghana mm -hmm. as well as some of the staff mm -hmm. uh, who uh, are this uh, uh, High Commission. Where exactly is this located? Well this is located at Ridge. Uh, it's not too far from the Ghana Institute of Journalism okay. or the uh, British High Commission. Mm. However, it's within a certain loop. If you know the Snake Guest House uh, around there, it's in a certain loop, so it's very difficult to locate where this particular building is. Mm. Uh, not many people use that route. It leads you into a cul-de-sac where the Snake Guest House is. So this is not the residence of the Commissioner exactly, but if you want an annex to the residency. Uh, indeed, uh, the, the residence of the High Commissioner mm. has this extension. Okay. Okay, so it is this extension mm -hmm. where the new building, which mm. was demolished, okay. uh, has been put up, mm. uh, was put up. Mm. And, and we understand that uh, the people who carried out the demolition are claiming the land belongs to them. Yes, that's the claim. And according to those who came in, uh, they mentioned uh, Glyco, but unfortunately we've not been able to reach Glyco uh, for their side of the story. But according to them, uh, the matter came up and they had to go to the police headquarters uh, to discuss the issue. Mm. And according to them, the uh, claimants brought some documentation to prove that they own the land, but mm. they're saying that uh, the date on it shows 2017. Mm. They acquired it in 2017, but the Nigerian High Commission is saying they acquired this in the 1960s, and so oh. uh, they, they, they disagree with them, and they were expecting that this matter will end up in court. Mm. But they just woke up uh, on, on uh, Friday, I mean Friday night, these persons came there with bulldozer, broke uh, the gates and the walls, and entered the facility uh, wielding weapons mm. and uh, kept everybody at bay and destroyed the building. I, I, I had saw um, also yes. a wall that has been freshly uh, built. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's supposed to be a wall that is existing, but I saw a fresh construction there. Mm -hmm. And I was told that a week today, la last week Monday, mm -hmm. The, there was another attempt to break into the facility. Mm -hmm. uh, they succeeded in breaking the walls, but they could not access the main building to demolish. And uh, on Friday, Friday night, around 10.30 p.m., the persons came in again uh, with weapons and then succeeded in, in, in entering the facility. Mm -hmm. In fact, the facility is such that once you enter, you have access to the... Nigerian High Commissioner's residence. Mm. And, and that is really uh, a serious situation there. But I had one of them also tell you that they wrote to the government of Ghana expecting a response, but they didn't get any response. And so for them, it comes as a surprise that this action will go on without the government of Ghana uh, communicating in any way. Is that the case uh, with the interaction? Yes, that's, that's the claim they made, but mm. we don't know the full extent of the engagement with the Foreign Affairs Ministry of Ghana. And mm. so uh, our understanding is that the Nigerian government has currently dispatched uh, a team uh, a team of officials from Nigeria. Mm. They're heading to Ghana right now to have a conversation with our government on this matter. Uh, we do also understand that the Nigerian president is expected to make a statement uh, on this issue later in the day. Mm. And so the Foreign Affairs Ministry, for instance, they had an event at 12 o'clock that has been shifted to 10 o'clock so they can make time for this engagement with their counterparts from Nigeria. And, and this has been widely reported uh, within the sub-region and also uh, in, uh, in internationally. Uh, what has been the reaction uh, from within the region, even in Ghana and uh, globally as, as, as this has happened? Well, we are seeing statements from mainly from the Nigerian trade associations mm -hmm. who are issuing threats as well. We have the House of Representatives Foreign Affairs Committee chairman also issuing a statement, also issuing threats. In fact, we've heard from some Nigerians themselves also uh, asking their government to cut ties with Ghana mm -hmm. if such a thing could be going on. Mm -hmm. uh, don't forget that for one year, some Nigerian shops in Ghana have been under lock and key because mm -hmm. they did not meet the requirements to operate here mm -hmm. in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And the Nigerians have always 
disagreed with Ghana on this matter. And so we think that the government of Ghana is behind this, mm -hmm. trying to do so. But mm -hmm. it, it, it's very important for uh, our government to make this clear because when I went there, I, I found out, in fact, they, the people themselves told me mm -hmm. that this it's an individual okay. who is claiming ownership of the land and not the government. The government I see. And you see from the tone of the Foreign Affairs Minister's statement, uh, it's, it's a condemnation of the act. Mm. Uh, it doesn't indicate government uh, involvement in any way. Mm. Their challenge, though, is the fact that the police headquarters is uh, less than five minutes away, but for so many hours. In fact, this happened at night, 10.30 p.m. 10 so I went there around 10 a.m. There was still no police presence there. Mm. Thank you very much, Fred Smith, and it's important that government deals with this so it doesn't escalate into some form of a bilateral role.